There is growing criticism of Donald Trump after he congratulated the Russian President Vladimir Putin on his re-election. Uh, the US President talked about the phone call during an Oval Office meeting with the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. Critics and election monitors say the Russian vote was neither free nor fair. The White House dodged questions about the call, saying the US does not get to dictate how other countries operate. And President Trump had an additional surprise. I had a uh, call with President Putin and congratulated him on the victory, his electoral victory. The uh, call had to do also with the fact that we will uh, probably get together in the not too distant future so that we can discuss uh, arms, we can discuss the arms race. Well, joining me here in Los Angeles, Democratic strategist Caroline Halbin, Republican strategist Charles Moran, and CNN senior political analyst Ron Brownstein, and in Manchester, New Hampshire, attorney and professor Seth Abramson. We're going to ask you to sit tight, Seth, for a minute while we look into this uh, Russia phone call uh, and uh, Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin. And what seems to be making this phone call even more extraordinary? So, reporting we have from the Washington Post, President Trump did not follow specific warnings from his national security advisers when he congratulated Russian Vra President Vladimir Putin Tuesday on his re-election, including a section in his briefing materials in all capital letters stating, "Do not congratulate." According to officials familiar with the call, uh, Ron, the Post does point out that the national security advisor H.R. McMaster uh, did not mention right. the issue when he spoke with the president before that conversation with Putin. But still, it was it was written down. It was there. And did he need to be reminded about that in the first place? Open question. What's more remarkable, that the president ignored the all cap instructions right. or that the all cap instructions mm -hmm. ended up in The Washington Post two or three hours <laughs> after the call? I mean, it is a both things, both facts are statements about how this White House is operating or not operating. I mean, clearly the fact that it was released to the press so fast just underscores the intense divisions within the White House. Leaks occur when one side in an internal debate feels that they're not being heard or being trampled on. And second, it underscores, I think, what we've seen increasingly over the last couple of weeks where the president feels untethered uh, and, and uh, feels more free to ignore advice from, uh, you know, the, the experts and the senior officials around him. And both of those, it, either of those would be a volatile. Both of them together are, are downright combustible. Okay, well, Senator John McCain, the Republican, he may be battling brain cancer, but he still actually has a spine. He tweeted this out. An American president does not lead the free world by congratulating dictators on winning sham elections, and by doing so with Vladimir Putin, President Trump insulted every Russian citizen who was denied the right to vote in a free and fair election. Charles, fair point? Um, I mean, I think at the end of the day that uh, President Trump was making an acknowledgement of the fact that the international community is going to recognize Vladimir Putin. There are plenty of Democrats across this country that were congratulating Hillary Clinton winning a sham primary against Bernie Sanders uh, in the Bernie last the election thing. cycle. So if we're talking about it. But again, the international community is going to recognize uh, Vladimir Putin. And again, the president does have... Uh, you know, unlike Senator McCain, I'm not sure Ukraine, okay, the, 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 pres Ukraine the president Ukraine is the leader of America, just, and wait, John McCain did is Did you not. just compare the Democratic <laughs> primary to the Russian election? Well, not seriously, right? Uh, Actually, quite seriously, if you look you, at... So you think there's a, a comparable level of I democratic saw, openness in Russia democratic, as, there, as there was... A democratic openness in the democratic party yes, in America? Right. Absolutely yeah. not. So, we saw so, the leader of the party right. absolutely working so, so to and what and candidates do. And in fact, the Republicans should have done more of that during the primary, and they would have had a better John candidate. McCain is not the leader of the uh, United States of America. President Trump is. He has the ability and the right to call and acknowledge what the international community is going to do, which is recognize Vladimir Putin... And again, it's, he segued between the right recognizing now, and, and congratulations. congratulations. Last week, we were talking about weapons in Syria. Today, President Trump is using this opportunity to try to address one of the biggest problems that Russia has, which is weapon sales in Syria. Well, I'll tell you what they're also not addressing, according to the Washington Post. Trump also chose not to heed talking points from aides instructing him to mm -hmm. condemn Putin about the recent poisoning of a former Russian spy in the United Kingdom with a powerful nerve agent, a case that both the British and U.S. governments have blamed on Moscow. And Caroline, the president also did not raise the issue of Russian interference in the U.S. election in 2016. All in all, it was a pretty good call for Vladimir Putin. <laughs> right, so he doesn't acknowledge that five days earlier the international community, including the United States, uh, condemned Russia, the Russian regime, for the murder of those two spies for, for a violation of international law in addition to, you know, killing people. Um, he didn't acknowledge that he meddled in the election. He didn't acknowledge what's happening with the power grid. I mean, what happened, in a nutshell, is Donald Trump called up the person who meddled in our elections to congratulate him on his sham election. It's a ludicrous day in the White House, regardless of 
whether we want to try to compare apples and oranges in the Democratic primary. There is no comparing it to Russia, where they do not have free and fair elections, nor do they even have the pretense of such. Okay, well, there are the growing fears that uh, the president might fire the special counsel, Robert Mueller, and try and close down the investigation into Russian interference uh, and the leaks to the Trump campaign. Uh, on Tuesday, the White House press secretary, Sarah Sanders, uh, went out of her way to reassure everybody that won't happen. The White House yet again confirms that the president is not considering or discussing the firing of special counsel Robert Mueller. The enthusiasm was palpable. Um, Ron, is there any point in giving any credence, any value to what Sarah Sanders Well, says? no, in the sense that, you know, no one knows what Donald Trump is going to do between now and November, including probably President Trump in, in, terms, of, in terms of Robert Mueller. The one thing that you can say is that congressional Republicans have chosen to, in essence, drop the uh, drop the shield that they were that they were holding. I mean, they, they've raised some rhetorical uh, concerns about this possibility, and Lindsey Graham, in particular, has been strong. But th uh, in terms of actual practical action, uh, Senate Majority Leader McConnell and House Speaker Ryan repeatedly saying they see no need for legislation uh, to protect Robert Mueller. I think is the big signal that they are sending to President yeah. Trump, and I think and I think he, you know, he is someone who, who does read people, and I think he is reaching the conclusion that if he did this, they would not object at a a nuclear level. They would right. find a way to accept it. It is an enormous risk for Republicans for the midterm election. Mm -hmm. you know, in the last CNN poll, 61 percent uh, of Americans said it was a serious threat that had to be investigated. Only a third said it was an attempt to undermine his presidency. And of that 61 percent, 80 percent of them are now saying they plan to vote Democratic for Congress. And they, and what congressional Republicans are doing, I think, is basically sending a signal to any voters who are ambivalent or uneasy about Trump that they are not going to constrain him in any meaningful way. I want to bring Seth in because Seth, longtime Trump critic, Republican Senator Jeff Flake, he tweeted this out. We are begging the president not to fire the special counsel. Don't create a constitutional crisis. Congress cannot preempt such a firing. Our only constitutional remedy is after the fact through impeachment. No one wants that outcome. Mr. President, please don't go there. Would this actually be a constitutional crisis or would it only be a constitutional crisis if Mueller was fired and then the Republicans did nothing about it? I think that it would be a constitutional crisis. I do think we do need to hear much more from Republicans suggesting that there would be consequences if Donald Trump fired Bob Mueller. And there is reason to think that he might do so. First of all, let's remember that he ordered White House lawyer Don McGahn to fire Bob Mueller. And the only reason that Bob Mueller didn't get fired at that point is that Don McGahn refused. Let's also remember that two sources told The New York Times that it was Donald Trump who just two days ago told his attorney, John Dowd, to publicly call for the end of the Mueller probe, which would mean the firing of Bob Mueller. And then finally, let's remember that the newest addition to Donald Trump's legal team, Joe DeGeneva, has previously called or previously called for the firing of Jim Comey, and in fact, far more than the firing, possibly even the prosecution of Jim Comey. So all signs point toward Donald Trump looking to fire Bob Mueller. And I do think that if he attempts to do so, it will be the same or worse even as the Saturday night massacre. And if Republicans don't act, Americans will be asking whether the rule of law survives in America. Uh, Carol, is there a problem here for the president in the sense that he goes to his club in Florida, he deals, you know, he, he mixes with, you know, the very wealthy there, his supporters. He goes to the rallies and he gets the chance and he hears the, the love and the adoration of that 30 to 40 percent of the population who supports him. And he is being, he's not listening to his advisors on this. And he's being told by this sort of bubble that, you know, it's a witch hunt. And he genuinely believes that there is nothing to this. I'm sure that he does, although he probably is also very afraid. I think he's in a tough place, right, where if he fires Bob Mueller, he will be impeached. I don't think he'll be removed in the Senate, mm. but I do think he'll be impeached. If he doesn't fire Bob Mueller, I think he will also be impeached when the findings of the investigation come forth. So either way, I think it's a safer bet to not impeach or, or to not fire Bob Mueller. Mm. Um, but at the end of the day, again, I don't think the Republicans, they, they have said that they're going to stop him at various points. He's done things that I think may and he, time and time again reached the point of, of high crimes and misdemeanors, which is a, actually a very loose standard, uh, but they haven't acted. So my guess is um, that they, they won't actually remove him, but it would be better if he did not remove Bob Mueller for his own sake. Do, do you think... Well, Charles, yeah, what do you yeah, think? How will Republicans would react? Uh, we're, I, I don't think we're going to get to a point where that's going to be an issue. The president has said he's not going to remove or stop the Mueller investigation. This, uh, the press secretary today said that, uh, that the investigation will continue and that the... Uh, um, 
uh, that Mr. Mueller will still continue to act in this role. This is this constant obsession that um, the news media and the Democratic Party has continued to drop the I word. Polling consistently shows the con that continued repetition of the word impeachment when there is no basis and no evidence to show that we're even going to get there. The, again, this obsession is not re related in any kind of reality whatsoever. Well, except, there's well, no, except, except there's the no reality. Except the president no tweeted reality. over the weekend yeah. that this is a witch hunt and, and attacking but, the special but, counsel by but, name you can the attack the, You can attack the special counsel. You can, uh, you can attack the reasons for the investigation, but the investigation is still going to happen. How many people has Sarah Sanders nonetheless. said? How many people has Sarah Sanders said won't be fired and then are fired within a week or two? Uh, Sarah Sanders has not in any circumstances said within a week or two that any no. of these people are going to be fired. No, that's th no, they have I, not. They have she not. is constantly saying that their positions are protected, which has now become a sure sign well, we're, that they're a year into the administration. So on, you know, <laughs> month three, <laughs> saying that somebody is not going to be relieved of their duties a year later. It's okay. totally inconsequential. Going to move on to the other pressing legal issues that the president is facing. A trifecta of sex scandal lawsuits. Uh, there's the Stormy Daniels, there's Karen McDougal, some of Zivos. Uh, I want to go to Seth on this because it seems the most serious of these three could in fact be the uh, one with Summer Zivos. She uh, claims she was sexually assaulted by Donald Trump uh, when he was host of The Apprentice. A New York court on Tuesday uh, ruled that her defamation case can in fact go ahead, uh, citing uh, the President Clinton versus Paula Jones issue. So explain the legal basis there. Well, this is a situation, let us remember, in which uh, at least 19 women have made allegations against Donald Trump, made them prior to the election. In some cases, matters of sexual harassment. In other cases, sexual assault. And some reservos is, is one of those. There are, are many others. We know now that this suit will proceed. There was some question about whether that would be allowed, but based upon the Clinton pres uh, precedent, it will be allowed to go forward. And we also now have Karen McDougal, who is seeking to follow in Stormy Daniels' path and also bring forward uh, their private liaison that she had signed, apparently, an NDA to not talk about. And so it looks like in the coming months, Donald Trump may be constantly faced with public disclosures about private liaisons. And I personally think that the more serious one is the Stormy Daniels case, because you have a situation there in which it appears that the president was successfully blackmailed for money over a sexual liaison, which of course is one of the central allegations of the Steele dossier, that the Kremlin has been doing that over matters that occurred in Moscow in November 2013. Very quickly, Seth, because lawyers for Zivos have subpoenaed Trump campaign documents dealing with allegations from any woman who claimed that she had been inappropriately touched or dealt with by Donald Trump. Uh, what are the chances they'll get those documents and what are the implications if they do? I think that there is a chance that this will open the door to substantial discovery and disclosures regarding other women. I can't say that I know all the details of all of these other allegations. I do know that Steve Bannon said, was quoted in Fire and Fury and has confirmed this since then, that he said that attorney Mark Kasowitz and other attorneys of Donald Trump have over the years uh, signed NDAs or somehow hushed up dozens or perhaps even scores or more of women who had relationships with Donald Trump. Now, we don't know if that's true or not, but if it is, this lawsuit by Summer Zervos could open the door to so many more disclosures than we even know about at this point. And this is already a distracted president and a distracted presidency. This would only exacerbate that. Uh, to the point, yes, sorry, Ron. In the strange sideboard category, one of the, in one of the articles today about the decision, who praised the New York decision? George Conway. The husband of Kellyanne oh, right. Conway said it was it was correctly decided based on no. based on Paula Jones. And look, I mean, there, there are obviously all sorts of legal vulnerabilities here. There is an overriding political question as well. You know, I've been one who have felt that at times the gender gap is overrated as a factor in American mm -hmm. politics and other things matter more, uh, marital status and educational status. But in this election, we are looking at potentially a significant gender gap. New numbers out just this week, NBC, Wall Street Journal. Uh, the best the Democrats, I looked this up today, the best the Democrats have done in the last 25 years in a, in a congressional election among college educated white women is 52 percent. They had Democrats in the new poll at 62 wow. percent among them uh, in, the, in the generic balance. Uh, the African American women obviously very engaged, and these, and that's before all of this. Happened. That's just mostly on President Trump's style. Right. You have weeks and weeks of these kinds of revelations, and, and those numbers probably get bigger. Because this Sunday we had the interview with Stormy Daniels, but with Anderson Cooper on 60 Minutes, uh, her lawyer released a photograph of Daniels taking this.
polygraph test a couple of years ago, answering all the questions, the controversial questions in passing. Mm. We know it's not admissible, but I, I, I want to give uh, you the last word here, Charles, because all of this does seem like the pressure is building, it's closing in. How can you be the Commander-in-Chief, mm. the President, whilst dealing with all of these other issues at the same time? Well, like you said, just the words, it's not admissible. Um, we've got uh, lawsuits that are being filed, we've got legal challenges being uh, addressed when Donald Trump was a private citizen, he was not President of the United States, as opposed uh, to President Clinton and some of the things he was going through while he was actually President of the United States. Um, under any circumstances, a woman who has been sexually assaulted in any way, shape, or form has uh, the right and responsibility to have her day in court, if that's the responsibility. Um, but at this case, you know, so far, um, you know, President Trump is an individual citizen, and before he was President of the United States, even running for President, has the right and responsibility to conduct himself. Uh, people voted yeah. for him knowing that he has uh, had three wives and has okay. children with every one okay, of well them. So <laughs> it is what it is. Okay, well, they say, well, there's two, there's 20. There's already 20 in this case, so we'll see what happens. Uh, uh, Seth and uh, Ron and Charles and Caroline, thank you all so much. Appreciate you being with us.